Hi everyone, I'm Daryl and I've been teaching secondary school students for over 10 years now. Now over the years, I've guided more than a thousand students to excel at their O-levels with close to 70% scoring a distinction. Now one of the most important gateways in your education journey in Singapore is your subject combination selection as you proceed on from Sec 2 to Sec 3. Your choice of subject combination have far-reaching impacts beyond just upper sec as it will affect your JC subject combination and even your university course selection. A seemingly simple decision now that you make have far downstream impacts to your eligibility to many choices in the future. So today, I intend to share with you in detail what are the things that you should consider and what is the best strategy when it comes to securing an ideal subject combination that will help you excel at all levels and gives you the most options in JC and university. After watching this video, you will have a much clearer clearer understanding of subject combinations at upper secondary, how it works, and to select the best subject combination for yourself. Also, just as a shout out, Overmark will be hosting our annual online subject combination webinar on the 22nd of October from 7.30 to 9.30 via Zoom, where our ex-MOE teachers will be sharing in detail key insights regarding different subject combinations. The session itself will be one and a half hours long and will go over recommended subject combinations and various tips that you don't want to miss. Sign up is free, so do register right away. Now, jumping straight into it. The first thing you need to consider is this. Regardless of what subject combination you choose, you must be aware that there are compulsory subjects which includes English language, mother tongue language, mathematics, science, and humanities. Now, there are three subjects that are fixed, which is English, mother tongue, and your elementary math. In short, e-math. There's an option to upgrade to higher mother tongue, which gives you an advantage to minus two marks off your L1 R5 when tabulating your O-level results. My advice is to take higher mother tongue if you're able to, because that minus two off your L1 R5 could be huge when it comes to making the cutoff for your choice of JC. Now, here comes the fun part, choosing the number of sciences and humanities as well as whether to take AMF or not. Now, to get a better understanding of your subject combination, you need to understand how your O-level results are calculated in the first place. Now, if you're looking to enter a JC via JAE, which is your joint admission exercise after your O-level, your admission will be based on your L1 R5 score. Your L1 R5 takes into account your first language, which is usually English, and five other relevant subjects, which must include at least one of your math, science, and humanities. To enter a junior college, you must meet two minimum criteria. The first is that your L1 R5 in total must not exceed 20, and you must pass your English, at least one math as well, and your mother tongue. Now, if you're looking to enter poly, your admission will be based on your L1 R4 score. Your L1 R4 takes into account your first language, two relevant subjects, and two of your remaining best subjects. The relevant subject depends on the course that you're looking to enroll into in Polytechnic. Now that you know how your O-level score is calculated, let's talk about which subject combination will suit you the best. Now, depending on the school itself, the subject combination offered will differ. Now, there are common subject combinations offered as what you can see over here. Starting with your eight subject combination, which is your triple science combination, meaning you'll be taking your pure chemistry, pure physics, pure bio. On top of that, you'll also be taking your EMath and AMath, your mother tongue, English language, and lastly, social studies plus one of your elective humanities. Now take note, whenever I mention humanities, it is a choice between your geography, history, and your English literature. Now, another eight subject combination is what we call your pure humanities combination. For this one over here, you only take two sciences, meaning you will take pure chemistry and either of your pure physics or pure bio. You will still take your EMath, AMath, mother tongue, English, but here you'll be taking a pure humanities. On top of that, you'll also be taking social studies and your elective humanities. Now, other than that, you also have what we call your seven subject combined science subject combination. Combined science is either a choice between chem physics or chem bio. You will take your EMath or an AMath. For some schools, they will replace AMath with POA, which is principles of account. You will also take mother tongue English, your pure humanities, and your social studies plus elective humanities. A sixth subject combination will be just combined science with your two math, mother tongue English, and lastly, your humanities, which is elective with SS. Now, humanities here refers to job history and literature. Most schools will offer. However, do take note that the literature offered will depend on the book that your school is covering. 
Now, typically to take triple science, you will need to at least score 75% and above at your SEC2 science. Double science will require to, you to score typically 60% and above. Now, let me mention three most important parts when it comes to your subject combination as you go from SEC2 to SEC3. The first question you probably will be wondering, should you be taking additional math? And to that, my answer is very clear. If you're planning to head to JC, I strongly encourage you to take A math. In fact, you must take A math. The reason is because H2 math at JC level requires heavy conceptual knowledge from A math. In other words, if you didn't take A math at upper sec, you will suffer a lot when you take, go on to JC to take H2 math. So the further implication is that if you do not take A math, and hence you do not take H2 math in JC, you will not be equipped to enter certain university courses that requires heavy math background, such as finance or even computer science. So my direct advice to you here is that you should definitely take A math and try to make it work. Now, the next question is usually whether to take triple science, double science, or combined science. My general advice is that it really depends on your next step after O levels. Now, let's say you're planning to go to the JC science trip you should most definitely go for either double or triple science. Technically, it is possible to enter JC science stream via combined science, but it will be an uphill battle. Sure, there will be a bridging course for combined science students to catch up at the start of JC, but to expect to learn two years worth of content in a matter of weeks is really asking for a lot. So if you already have an eye out for JC and you know you're likely to enter the science stream, you should invest your time to excel at all levels so that you have an easier time with a stronger foundation in JC. Now, only go for triple science if you are already very good at your science and intend for it to play a heavy part in your L1, R5 strategy. So in terms of requirements, technically your L1, R5 only requires one science, but if your remaining sciences perform well, you can actually include them in your L1, R5 as your remaining relevant subjects. Personally, I would recommend taking double science as when you move on to JC, you will only take two out of three sciences. The compulsory one will of course be chemistry. Now, for those of you who are considering medicine, do note that you do not need to take H2Bio or biology necessary as the entry requirement for medicine is actually H2 chemistry and H2 physics or H2Bio. So either combination of chem with physics or chem with bio will work. Now, I'll caveat though, however, that more of the content you learn in bio is actually relevant to your coursework in medicine. Now, what about combined science? Now, unless you have no choice. Opting for double science instead of combined science is always the more smarter choice. Now, in terms of syllabus requirement, combined science covers about roughly 70% of the content that pure science covers. This means you're doing the equivalent of 140% of work for one subject essentially. Furthermore, combined science becomes your default science subject that you must include in your L1, R5 regardless of how good or bad it is. So my take will be more of that if you want to go for double science, it's actually smarter because now you can actually spread your chances of either of your pure science performing well and therefore using that better performing science for your L1, R5. So hypothetically speaking, if you're very weak in say chemistry, but very strong in bio, you can then choose to focus more effort on biology and to make it an A1 and to use it as your compulsory science subject rather than going for combined chem bio and having your chem pull down your bio score. However, it's important to note that the difficulty level pitch at combined science is definitely more manageable and therefore easier for you to score better. The competition for combined science is also less, so that's an additional factor for you to consider. But should you choose to take combined science, be well warned that going for science stream in JC will be a lot more difficult as a lot of JCs have a requirement that you must score A1 for combined science if you choose to enter a science stream. So my advice is take triple science only if you're planning to use all three sciences in your L1, R5. Otherwise, taking double science is probably the most strategic choice and only take combined science if you're sure you're not going to JC science stream or if you're planning to go on to JC art stream or going to poly, for example. Now, the third key question to ask yourself is how many humanity subjects should you take? Now, generally speaking, most students will be offered to take social studies and another elective humanity subject. So one of your geography, history, or English literature. Now, some schools, however, do offer pure humanities as well. So pure history, pure literature, or pure geography. The question to ask yourself is, you know, out of these three humanities, which one should you focus on? So let's start with history. Now, the first thing I want you all to know is that the history covered at lower secondary level 
mainly focuses on Singapore's history. This is very different when you move on to Upper Sec, as Upper Sec's content will be global history, focusing on largely Europe and US, covering significant events that happened in the past century, such as World War I, World War II, and the Cold War. So if you didn't really like Lower Sec history because it's largely about Singapore's history, you might feel quite differently about history at Upper Sec. Now, while it is true that history as a subject, there's a lot of content to memorize, as these are all actual events that has happened in our past, there are actually multiple ways to digest the content, such as from videos on YouTube, documentaries you can watch on Netflix, or even movies itself. So I'll say that if you do not have a clear idea of which humanities you prefer, one added advantage for history specifically is that your essay writing skills and your source-based skills have a large carryover to social studies as well. So doing well in history would likely mean that you will also do well in social studies, although the content covered is very different. Now for geography, by lower sec, you will probably have a pretty good understanding of what geography is about. So if you like learning more about how our physical and the human world around the world is constructed and you enjoy doing field work, take geography. Lastly, for literature, please research carefully on what books your school literature department is actually covering and if the book is something you're interested in. Taking literature if your English is good enough is sort of like the best advice and only if you're interested in literature. The next question you probably need to ask yourself is how many humanity subjects should you take? To me, it boils down to which stream you're considering when you're entering JC. Now, if you're planning to go to art stream in JC, it is strategic for you to take pure humanities at O levels as a lot of the content do carry over to help you in JC. Now, in contrast, a student that only takes humanities at elective level, you will have a significant advantage in JC with a stronger foundation from your pure humanities itself. If you're taking triple science, it is likely that your school will get you to take elective social studies with elective humanities. If you're taking double science, some schools do offer pure humanities and uh, elective humanities with social studies as well. Now, another thing to consider is which science subject that you're taking. Now, among the three sciences, bio is typically seen as a subject that has more content. So ideally, you might want to avoid a combination with both bio and say history, as you'll need to cram a lot of knowledge before your exam. Of course, ample preparation will go a long way, but this is one of the factors that you should consider as well. For humanities, it is quite true that you should choose a subject that you're most interested in, as that will usually translate to you performing the best as well. So regardless of which science or humanities combination that you're taking, I recommend taking between seven to eight subjects as the optimum load. This means taking your compulsory English, mother tongue, e-math, and I'll just throw in AMF here as well. So these are like the four that you'll definitely be taking. Your remaining permutation would be either taking triple science with one elective humanities or double science with one pure humans and one elective humans if you're trying to make up your eight subject combination. Typically, most schools will push you towards a seven subject combination, which is a combination of double science with elective humans or combined science with pure humans and elective humanities. Now, some schools do offer Principle of Accounts, POA, instead of AMF. I would say that POA is useful if you're planning to enter a business-related course in Polytechnic as it has real-world application. But understand the importance of AMF and the implications should you choose to opt out of it. But I acknowledge that while I did not cover other special combinations like you taking your third language, uh, design and technology, art, music, and other specific language programs, those, they really do exist, but it depends on your school and doesn't apply to the large majority of the student population, which is why I did not go through them in detail in this video. So at the end of the day, when you're deciding your subject combination, I want you to ask yourself a few questions. The first, now what is most likely my best L1, R5 combination for my O-level? On top of that, a backup subject. Next, ask yourself, where are you likely to hit to after O-levels? Is it JC or Poly? If it's JC, is it the art stream or the science stream? Lastly, which subjects you are currently strongest at and which subjects are you most interested in? If you follow these guiding thoughts, you will likely have a very good sensing of which subject combination will suit you the best. Now spend some time to browse through the syllabus document available on SEAB's website and review if the content covered in the syllabus is what you expect it to be. The worst thing that can happen is you randomly choosing a subject combination that backfires on you at O levels. So please, please make an informed decision here. So if you watched till the end of today's video, congratulations. 
As mentioned earlier, Ola Overmark will be hosting our annual online subject combination webinar on the 22nd of October from 7.30 to 9.30 on Zoom. And our ex-MOE tutors will be sharing in detail key insights regarding different subject combinations. So please, please sign up right away and sign up is free. So register now for your slot. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.